Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. Let me begin by apologizing for my absence today. This is due to reasons that are beyond my control and I seek your understanding in this matter. But I am with you very much in spirit because the subject under discussion is very close to my heart. Today at this panel, I would like to give you an upshot of Heartfile Health Financing, which is a program for the poor in Pakistan. And as such, it goes beyond the traditional Bismarck and beverage approaches to health financing. What we are trying to address in Pakistan is a specific weakness within the health system, which has to do with its inability to protect people from medical impoverishment. Some of you may know that Pakistan is a country of 200 million people situated in South Asia, where more than 70% of the individuals are in the informal sector, 40% are below the poverty line of US dollar one a day, and 78% pay out of pocket for health care. And since the government's social protection arrangements have a very narrow envelope, it doesn't come as a surprise that health care costs constitute the bulk of economic shocks faced by households. Our key outcome of interest in heart file health financing was therefore protection against catastrophic health expenditures, medical indebtedness, and foregone care. Essentially, the program is a demand-side health financing instrument with three salient components. One of these is a health equity fund. The second is a mobile phone integrated technology platform, which has been established with a view to promoting transparency, efficiency, and accountability within the system. The technology supplants human discretion and subjective decision-making with pre-configured rules, which helps guard against abuse. Its workflow and time-stamping features ingrain better accountability. The technology also allows donors the choice of donation deployment and enables them to track donations in real time. It keeps them closely informed about donation utilization and all of these are features which we believe help ingrain better transparency within the system. The third feature of heart file financing is a post-identification system of validating poverty, which draws on a number of sources including the National Poverty Database. Since we are an NGO with limited resources, we try to be very strategic as we were planning this program and we try to build on existing strengths within the country's body politic. For example, Pakistan has a high penetration of mobile phones with more than 130 million users. There is an enabling telecommunication infrastructure in place. The culture of giving and philanthropy is deeply entrenched. Mobile banking is get, getting rapidly upscaled. The country also has a national archive of personal identities for more than 120 million people and a national poverty database which has information on 28 million families. When we were establishing heart file financing, we tried to draw on all these strengths and pull the thread through them. The Health Equity Fund, for instance, which now has many sources of contributions, initially drew on philanthropy as a source of support. We heavily relied on mobile phones when we designed the technology and made sure that the technology was compatible with every cell phone in use in the country. A simple SMS can now trigger the system. And when mobile banking services became available in the country, we quickly integrated these into our process. Heart file financing's technology infrastructure was developed with scale-up as a main consideration. So we needed to be mindful of the capacity of Pakistan's telecommunication infrastructure. What we ultimately created enables deployment even in the remotest of areas. And we also integrated telemedicine features which can allow scale up with lean operational costs. The third element of our program is a system of validating poverty, which is currently interfaced with the National Database Registration Authority. We use the state's poverty indicators in our validation system with a view to helping deployment nationwide at any point in the future. But beyond that, the system also has the capacity to use donor-specific poverty validation instruments. And we are indeed at this point in time catering to the requirements of various donors in that regard. 
So in terms of how the system runs, uh, simply donors in pre-registered hospitals need a bit of training, especially when it comes to the use of cell phone templates. And from there on, once they and their facilities are registered, they can pretty much start seeking assistance right away. A simple SMS can trigger the system and doctors can put in requests on behalf of their patients. Uh, thereafter, at Heartfile, we ascertain eligibility through telemedicine, enable interviews or face-to-face -face interviews if that is logistically feasible. Simultaneously, through our online verification system, we access data from the National Database Registration Authority. And after a transparent and inclusive process uh, of decision-making, eligible cases are supported through our Health Equity Fund. Since we work in public hospitals, ladies and gentlemen, part of the cost of care is already taken care of. So the hospital and doctor's charges are the government's responsibility, whereas we pay for disposables, implants, and expensive medicines, which the patient is expected to pay out of pocket for in any case, and which are the main impoverishing expenditures for them. In this sense, this program is also a public-private partnership which leverages the comparative strengths and needs of each partner. We also give assistance for travel and food, since most cases come from very far-flung areas, and even these trivial costs are catastrophic for them. Heartfile Health Financing is currently deployed in three cities in selected wards of six hospitals, which have a catchment area of over 600 kilometers radius. Our turnaround time is 72 hours, as opposed to the average turnaround time of the state system, which is around two months. Currently, one-time catastrophic costs are underwritten, and to date more than 2,000 individuals have received assistance through this program. The average size of the grant is US dollars 450. We believe patients are safe from delays, distress, and discrimination when they seek assistance through the system uh, and which are otherwise quite common in the existing the state system. On the other hand, we also believe that donors get unprecedented transparency in the use of their funds. Also, agencies that are genuinely interested in, in improving their social protection targeted are benefiting because the system eliminates false inclusions and false exclusions, which as many of you are aware, are quite characteristic of social protection programs. The idea is to hone the process further and expand the process incrementally, both in terms of expanding the current grants-based program, but in addition, we are also integrating health loans into the program, which can broaden its outreach to above the bottom of pyramid Plans are also underway to enhance our capabilities so that we can also become responsive to chronic impoverishing conditions. We are on the way to integrating an in-kind donation management system to tap another pool of donations, especially from expatriate Pakistanis. Technological upgrades are planned to allow integration of business intelligence features, interactive voice response mechanisms, and linkages with online social networking communities, which can make the system far more interactive and responsive. We know, ladies and gentlemen, that the program currently has its limitations in terms of impacting quality of healthcare and ingraining preventive behaviors in the health system. And in that respect, we're trying to expand the program in such a way that program enrollment and ongoing monitoring can subsequently become tools to make certain quality and prevention-related benchmarks as a conditionality for enrollment in the first place. And hence, we are slowly trying to integrate an accreditation, a quality accreditation program with hard file financing. In terms of evaluation, a process evaluation is underway and a longitudinal analysis is planned. Through this program, ladies and gentlemen, we are striving to serve an urgent humanitarian need in Pakistan. But on the other hand, we are also pursuing the long-term development objective of protecting people from uh, financial ruin and are striving 
to deploy a system which will have health system strengthening features for Pakistan. We believe hard file financing is an important policy approach for protecting the poor and can play an important part in enabling Pakistan to achieve universal coverage goals as far as financial access to health care is concerned. And we have also explained the rationale for this approach in the recent Pakistan Lancet series, which we spearheaded. But beyond Pakistan, we also believe that the model can have relevance for other developing countries with large populations in the informal sector. And wherever there is GSM service, which makes the program relevant pretty much across the world. As for my personal aspiration, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to see a world where no one foregoes health care or becomes impoverished as a result of health care costs. Thank you, Tim and Peter, for your partnership in organizing this session. It seems as though we are just about to commence on a very long journey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention.